I want to introduce a concept to you, and I want to raise your awareness about that concept and then open this up for further exploration. The scope of it is, is, is too big to really get into in detail in a, in a five or ten minute presentation, but once again, uh, Charlotte said, what did you find? Well, prior to the big economic meltdown, uh, I was dealing with small businesses who were encountering the standard set of situations you all will when thinking about, when launching, with when growing a business and, and as it goes through all of its stages of maturity. I was going to companies and, and helping them uh, identify uh, their goals, uh, uh, align all their resources and, and implement plans, strategic plans to, to successfully achieve uh, their dreams. And I had packaged up a whole marketing campaign to come to market very, very vigorously and sell my services because I felt I believed in them and they were valuable and had some great success stories. And then something happened. The economic meltdown occurred and people were still dealing with the same problems, but now they were dealing with the fact that uh, there were no customers. There was no money available. The, the entire world was in a tailspin. And I started talking to people and the first thing that they did was they were in denial. This is not happening to me. I want to stick my head in the sand and maybe it'll go away tomorrow. And then they went to defense. Uh, pull in our horns, cut costs, let people go, drop our advertising, do everything we can just to survive. Now there's some merit to that. And then I saw people who said, well, wait a minute, you know, this, we're, we're getting pounded by by newspapers and by television, and they're out there really pumping this this thing to a hysterical thing. There's some truth in it. It's very, very severe, but we we can't be driven by fear. We can't make mistakes uh, driven by fear, and we can't just sit around in paralysis. So we have to go and do something that's a little a little bit more aggressive, and that's to play for a win. Huh. Consequently. In change like this, in dramatic change, there's all sorts of opportunity because the, the, the status quo has been broken. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in, if when things are locked down, you have a very, very hard time to, to bring anything new to market or do any innovation, but with all this change occurring, it's a great opportunity. So my counsel was, let's play offense. Let's take advantage of those people who are, who are going to mark time until this blows away, if ever, and let's capture market, let's get more aggressive, and let's, let's gear up for, for getting a better position for when this does turn around to, to really be a leader and, and to, uh, to, be, to be quantum leaps ahead of the competition. And I started saying, you know, what am I, what am I actually seeing here? And a, a question was starting to form. And this is a question that you, this is the big question of all. If you go to a bank, if you go to a venture capitalist, if you go to anybody who's going to write a grant for you, if you go to anybody where you're seeking access to capital for your business, either in startup or in expansion or in just uh, operational uh, things that happen that you need cash flow. The big question, if, you are, if you're standing in front of you, let's see, the, 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 you know, the big banker there, he's looking down, he's going to want to know about your, your business plan, your marketing, about your, you know, who's on board, what's your, your financial plans, what's your... All of the stuff that goes into that, but that all comes down to one question. And that question is, is this business under control? And is it going to be professionally or is it being professionally managed? Because if it is, you've already considered and come up with set of satisfactory awareness and answers to all of the things that go into successfully running a business. You can walk into a business and you can. You can observe and look and you can tell whether it's properly managed and under control. You can tell probably in five minutes. I walked into Crab Place, and in five minutes, I looked around, and I just saw it was there. The concept was understood, it was shared, it was driven down through the organization to everybody there. The, the visibility of everything about that business was apparent, they all shared the information, and they were able to, to anticipate each other in fast-breaking uh, events. Do small business owners have the time, the knowledge, the inclination, they're so busy just doing it all, to stop and effectively manage a business? Uh, unfortunately, the answer is, is no. When I work with people, <laughs> look, we're too busy putting out fires, we're too busy doing this, we're too busy doing that. Well, 
my counsel was, you got to stop and you've got to adopt sound, basic, fundamental principles of management and bake them into your process so you don't stop. Meetings are organic. They're part of everything you do every day. Uh, the, the observations you make, the, the measurements that you make, there's something that is that just stem from your activity. Uh, hiring a consultant from the outside to come in and, and impart knowledge or to, to help you with, with processes uh, is great. It's a snapshot because when that consultant leaves, things are changing so rapidly that that stuff is obsolete. So unless you can afford to have a lifetime relationship with a consultant, you need to know how to professionally manage your business yourself from the get-go. If you're a solopreneur, if you're an entrepreneur, if you're a business that's already expanded and has employees, you have to know that because mismanagement is like, it's like, it's like a disease, a very, very serious disease. In the early stages, it's very, very hard to detect but very easy to cure. In the later stages, it's very, very easy to detect, but very, very hard to cure. So if you, when entering business, if you adopt the sound, basic principles of, of management, if you understand what management is, and essentially it's about people. It's getting people all working together with diverse, special knowledge, knowledge workers, to share a vision, share a goal, and to work in concert to achieve uh, a, a mutual benefit. And it's an art. It's taught, it's taught in school. It's taught as a liberal art, because management is just not about business. Management is about personal management, how you, how you orient yourself, how you conduct yourself in your, in your personal life. Management is about business and it's about organizations. Your church is managed, your, your nonprofits are managed, the Boy Scouts are managed. Uh, and it's also about society. You, you exist in, and all of those things exist in society, and it's all about management. It's all about people working together, having common vision, and somebody, not supervising tasks, but directing, leading people to, to common uh, desired end results. Now, do you have the time to go to school? I don't know. Maybe you do. Do you have the time to go to seminars and read books? You probably do. Do you have the time when you're actually doing the job to, to implement that? I say you must. And if you don't, you will face that when, when it hits the fan, you will have events run over you. You will, uh, I wrote this down, you will be feeding problems and starving opportunities. So what I'm talking about is not a set of of disciplines and not a set of tools and rules and, and tricks and things like that, although they exist because there are methods and practices to use in applying good management to any situation. What I'm talking about is an approach. It's an orientation. You can have the best plans, the best financing, the best people, the best product, best of everything. You open that door and the fire hose hits you and it's all over. And you have to innovate. Now, if you have a, a platform to operate from that's based in sound fundamental principles, you can always get back on track. So to that end, I thought, okay, maybe I can teach people how to be general business managers. Maybe I can teach them without having to have them go to school, attend a lot of seminars, and read all the books that I have. I've put in 10,000 hours because it interests me, and I feel that I've, I've mastered the subject, even though I didn't go to Harvard. I know Harvard forward and back, and I use them as a resource. So what I'm saying is that I, my, my new orientation, my new goal is to teach people in their own businesses individually how to create and custom craft the organizational structure and then the management apparatus to, to guide their businesses so that they can truly uh, innovate adroitly in all of their environments.